Okay, let's talk about getting up to speed or making progress. It can be quite common for students to take their time getting up to the speed limit once they've completed a junction. Of course, at the beginning of your training journey, we accept that it will take you a little bit longer to be able to do everything because there's an awful lot for you to remember. And everything needs to be nice and smooth and not happen suddenly. However, if you take too long to get up to the speed limit, you will be tailgated by the vehicles behind you or you'll encourage them to go for dangerous overtakes. So when you're moving off in traffic or when you're moving off from a junction, try to get yourself up to the speed limit where it's safe to do so in good time. Don't dawdle your way up to the speed limit. If you're riding on your own, say you've got your own 125 motorbike, if you take too long to get up to the speed limit, the vehicles behind will follow you too closely. They'll start looking for a dangerous overtake and they won't really care about putting you in danger whilst they do it. So where it's safe to do so, even when it's wet, you should be getting yourselves up to the speed limits in order to get away from the traffic and create what we call a safety bubble behind you whilst you maintain the safety bubble in front of you with your following distance. So now I'm on the main road, I'm going to be positive with my acceleration and I'm now at 32. Even though it's wet, I'm smooth but positive. Smooth means not sudden. So when you're accelerating, you're doing it smoothly. You're very steady with the clutch, you're very careful with that clutch, you feed it through. And then when you come over to the throttle, you gently roll the throttle open. We don't do anything sudden when it's wet. We don't do anything sudden any anyway, but especially when it's wet. One of the other common faults is that people get themselves up to the speed limit and then they gradually drop back down again. And that's usually because they're not in the correct gear for the speed that they're doing. And once you're at the speed limit, try and maintain your speed by being in the highest gear that you can be in, where the bike is comfortable, without revving it really high or it chugging, telling you that it's not happy in the gear that you're in. Sometimes students will hold the bike in too low a gear with lots of high revs going on whilst they're travelling down the road at 30 miles an hour, for example. When they could be in one gear up with less revs and the bike will hold itself more steadily. It's also very common for people to roll off the throttle when they're doing their check. When you're setting off from junctions, try to imagine a linear acceleration process whilst you're doing your mirror checks and cancelling your indicators. A lot of people wait to accelerate until after they've done their mirrors, cancelled their indicators. Try to do it at the same time, learn to multitask. So as you're cancelling your indicator and checking your mirrors, you should be accelerating up to the speed limit to get away from the traffic behind you to create a lovely safety bubble in front of you and behind you so you're in this lovely safe space of your own. So this car is driving at 22 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour speed limit which is very frustrating because it was safe down that road to go at 30 miles an hour. So where it's safe to do so, do get yourselves up to the speed limit otherwise you're just holding the traffic back pointlessly. And on your tests, if you choose to ride at 20 miles an hour in a 30 for a prolonged period of time, you will fail your test. Particularly if there's traffic behind you, who you're preventing from making progress. If you dawdle at significantly below the speed limit for a long period of time on your test, and you're holding traffic back behind you by doing so, you will fail. You should be showing the examiner you know what the speed limit is and if it's safe to do so, you should be getting up to the speed limit. In terms of making progress when you're at traffic lights where there's multiple lanes, don't be afraid to use the other lanes to make progress to get away from the slower moving traffic. The examiner doesn't want to sit in traffic, he wants to go for a nice ride with you, so take him for a nice well-planned ride. 
don't make last minute lane changes but plan ahead so there's a queue of traffic in lane one and a couple of relatively big vehicles who are likely to be slower to accelerate than the rest of us so let's use the power get up to speed plan ahead i may not be able to merge this time but at least i'm ahead of one car so i'm going to merge in behind the lorry because that's the safest thing to do but I know on this road, there's multiple opportunities to be able to get ahead of slower moving vehicles. I'm not getting too close to the back of the lorry because one, it's wet and two, I want to be able to forward plan. It's okay to be in position three at the moment because of the hatched markings separating us from the oncoming traffic. And that's allowing me to move into lane two positively up to the speed limit to pass the lorry within the space that I've got without speeding get my shoulder check in and we're away and it doesn't matter if you do that and leave the examiner behind it's his problem not yours if you get split up and you're effectively showing him that you know how to safely make progress and merge back in with the traffic so don't be afraid to be positive with getting up to the speed limit now the reason i didn't do it here is because the cars in front are relatively close together and that would seem a little bit pushy and or dangerous if they didn't actually leave me enough space to merge in with them so sometimes you do need to use your judgment as to whether you're going to try and push in between vehicles or make sure that there's a big enough gap for you to be able to merge before you commit to coming past them and again i know lane two goes straight ahead here we've got a slow moving vehicle in lane one so let's use the power and get up to 42. And even when it's raining, that doesn't mean we should be riding slower. It just means we should be leaving a longer distance between us and the vehicles in front and planning further ahead to slow down earlier and more gently for any hazards that we come across. So some people say they want to ride more slowly in the rain. I'd agree with that for your bends, turns and roundabouts. Those speeds should be less. But in terms of making progress and getting up to the speed limits, even when it's raining, unless there's a lot of surface water and it's not safe, we should be riding at the speed limits if it's safe to do so. How you get up to the speed limit and how you slow down from the speed limit is different when it's wet. So you're going to take more time to accelerate more smoothly and gradually. And you're going to take more time to gently brake using 50-50 front and rear rather than 80-20. So our roundabout speeds and our bend speeds are slightly slower when it's wet in case there's a problem with grip or road surface. And we're also careful not to ride directly over those white lines, which could potentially be slippy. So where you've got the big arrows, it is sensible just to stay to the left of them when you're approaching your roundabout or your junction. Particularly if you're braking heavily, which you shouldn't be because it's wet, but particularly if you're braking. We don't really want to be braking heavily on the white lines, which could have less grip than the main tarmac. So now I'm off the roundabout and bringing it back up to 32. I'm holding the speed steady at 32, checking my mirrors and getting ready to accelerate once I'm through these signs. Nice and positive. 42. Even though it's wet. Don't forget that when you go uphill, you need to accelerate up the hill to keep your speed at the same speed. Regularly, we get people slowing down because they're not accelerating against the hill. So part of making progress on a motorcycle is knowing when you need to use more throttle to keep your speed steady so that you don't lose your speed as the gradient increases. Nice and positive, up to 42, even though it's raining, just nice and smooth with everything that we do. The road surface is good, 
it is wet but that means I'm going to be planning ahead more so I'm going to start my braking early for the change of speed limit use the gears a little bit as well because it's downhill once again starting the braking early anticipating the Mercedes coming through nice and smooth as we move off gently with the clutch gently again with the clutch for our gear change and it's smooth with the throttle up to 32 so I'm nicely away from the traffic behind I'm not dawdling even though it's raining the reason we say 32, 42 and 52 is to allow for speedo error speedos are regularly inaccurate and if you're doing 27 or 28 in a 30 the car behind may be showing 25 or 26 on their speedo so we train our students to do 32 obviously you should do what your instructors tell you to do but that's the reason why we do 32 42 52 for example it just helps to keep the traffic away from following us too closely and it encourages the students to get up to the speed limit as opposed to dawdling along at 25 in a 30 which again tends to simply encourage people to tailgate If the examiner takes you out into the countryside where there's national speed limits don't be afraid to get your speed up between the bends and then start planning for the next bends if it's safe to do so of course. Sometimes when people are out in the countryside they're only comfortable to get up to about 35-40 miles an hour which is what they're used to doing around town which is where they'll be doing most of their motorcycle training. It's quite important that you can develop your confidence whilst you're training in the countryside to become comfortable with riding at faster than your 40 mile an hour or 50 miles an hour. The examiner needs to see that you're able to plan for the bends and if you're riding at a consistent 30 to 40 miles an hour and not getting your speed up he can't actually see that you're able to ride at those higher speeds and then plan ahead nor does he know that you know what the speed limit is and it will obviously depend on the road the width of the road so this road isn't especially wide and it's quite bendy so i've only managed about 48 miles an hour so far as my top speed In a moment it's going to broaden out and I'll be able to pick the speed up again if it's safe to do so but it is dependent on the road of course and any hazards that are around at the same time. So here we can pick our speed up, there's no hazards ahead, we're in a national speed limit and we're going to be planning for the roundabout really early so we can see the chevrons, I've just seen the car go across. So early mirrors I keep my speed up for now, mirrors again, easing off the throttle gently gently gently, starting with the brakes really very very gently just to start taking that speed off because it's wet, time to indicate, looking for any traffic that's coming, it's very hard to see here because of the hedge, careful with the acceleration because of the drain cover, would have been a bit, little bit difficult there to go to the left of the drain cover for the gap between it and the um, curve wasn't particularly big there. And once again there's a car coming up behind so I'm being positive but smooth getting up to the speed limit. I've created a lovely safety bubble behind and I'm in control of the safety bubble ahead of me. I can only apologise if the camera is covered in rain today. <laughs> Once again, we're starting our braking early and gently. Not getting too close to the vehicles in front. We've got an opportunity because those cars are all going straight ahead. So that was a nice early decision. Mirrors. Whilst I'm checking my mirrors, I'm accelerating smoothly. One of the reasons we choose to ride motorbikes is in order to enjoy the acceleration and the ability to get away from the traffic. 
So don't be afraid to use your power smoothly and safely to get yourselves up to the speed limit, to get away from traffic behind you, to create that lovely safety bubble. If the traffic behind then decides to speed, that's their decision. And then you need to try and work out what you're going to do if you are being tailgated. If you can be nice and positive when the speed limits change, so early mirrors, and as soon as you're through the signs, you can then accelerate up to the next speed limit. So nice and positive, let's go. Let's show you the car behind, but we don't intend to dawdle, we're just intending to do the speed limits. 